So guys, before I go ahead and get out of here, I'm going to give you one teaser. One thing that I found out about while at the event, and I chatted with a few individuals that you won't see on any document, that you won't see on any presentation, that you probably won't see in any other video out there. Today's video is sponsored by the team over at CoinMiningCentral.com. With crypto mining hardware prices falling, right now is the best time to snag that ASIC miner you always wanted. I've been working with the team at Coin Mining Central for over a year now and will continue to put my trust in their brand for ASIC purchases. Coin Mining Central always has stock in my favorite Bitcoin, Script, Cadena, and K Heavy Hash ASIC miners for super reasonable and competitive prices. Finally, if you do have one of these rare situations where hardware is problematic, all ASICs come with the manufacturer warranty to ease your concerns. Looking for a well-established, trusted, and safe way to purchase an ASIC? Look no further than Coin Mining Central. Go check out Coin Mining Central today via the link in the video description down below, as well as save $120 at checkout with the discount code, the hobbyist miner. Two weeks ago, I was invited to fly to Fort Lauderdale to experience the first Cypherpunk 2023 event hosted by the Flux team. The entire event was an absolute blast. The Flux team did an amazing job hosting as well as entertaining throughout the entire two days of the event. Now, as Flux's first event, Cypherpunk 2023 was amazing and I can't wait for 2024. But let's be honest, we were all there for one thing, and really one thing only, and that was Flux unveiling Proof of Useful Work on day two. On day two, the Proof of Useful Work announcement was presented by two individuals. First one was their chief business officer, which was Davey Whitcock, and the second individual was their chief Proof of Useful Work architect, Alex Perez. Now, there was a ton of information that was unloaded during this presentation, and I'm not going to go through it all, but I do have a copy of the presentation. So if you're interested in checking out the PDF, I will leave a link directly down below that has the entire thing. And go over and check it out because there's a lot more information than I can cover in this video, especially when it comes down to the way and the look of the Proof of Useful Work Marketplace from the client side is really, really cool. So go check it out after this video, link directly down below. All right, so let's talk about the Proof of Useful Work hardware requirements that were recapped during the presentation. So taking a look here, we'll actually start a little bit in reverse and look at the motherboard. So some key things that they went ahead and discussed during the presentation is that PCIe Gen 3 motherboards will be needed with greater than X8 lanes for efficient data transfer and improvement performance. Now on the CPU side though, the CPU, one of the major factors with the CPU is the fact of the CPU needs to be able to support virtualization with an aim of greater than four threads per CPU for optimal optimiz optimizations there. Now, all that in mind, virtualization is key. It needs to be something that can be enabled, especially within the BIOS. So if you guys are farming and looking for hardware to prep for your proof of useful work build, CPU, motherboard, virtualization are a very important. Now, when it comes down to the RAM, this one is a little interesting. The minimum is, is greater than the total VRAM plus 25% for optimal performance. So let's go ahead and say that you have a one graphics card in your proof of useful work rig that has 10 total gigabytes of memory. Well, you need to go ahead and have 10 gigabytes of memory as well as 25% more on top of that. So keep that in mind. I don't think you're really gonna be running GPUs with eight graphics cards because you're going to need an insane amount of memory. Now moving on from there, looking at your GPUs. Based off of everything I've seen and heard when it comes down to GPUs, you need to look at the VRAM. So a 3070 is not gonna be anything spectacular at only eight gigabytes, but looking at other graphics cards that support more, maybe your 3060 that has 12 gigabytes is actually going to be better for proof of useful work. And finally, storage. Storage, you're actually gonna want two different media types. 
you're going to want an NVMe uh, that's fast, quick, that has the operating system installed on it, which is going to be flux core. And then finally, you're going to want a big, badass hard drive. Eight, 10, 12 terabytes would be ideal because you're going to be downloading the entire project that your rig is working on. All right, let's discuss benchmarking. So benchmarking will be a feature built in with the Flux Core platform. Flux Core is the OS or operating system. We'll talk about that more in a minute. And the benchmarking component is going to be critical for us miners that are looking to build some type of rig to support this. Benchmarking is going to give you the ability to see how you kind of line up versus others out there that are within the space, as well as see which parts of your hardware are best and the strongest and what areas are the weakest and need to go ahead and be beefed up in order for you to compete pretty much with all the other hardware out there for compute. Because at the end of the day, the more powerful your rig is, the more likely you are to get, well, rented or used for proof of useful work. So let's talk about Flux Core. What the heck is Flux Core? So Flux didn't spend, their Flux team didn't spend all this time just working on proof of useful work. They've actually been working a ton on an operating system. Now, I guess it's not really an operating system, it's more of an application. Flux Core sits directly on top of Linux, but from our perspective and from dumbing it down a little bit down to our GPU miner mindset, it's an operating system. And at the end of the day, it's pretty badass looking. We did have the ability to go ahead and see the login screen for Flux Core and a mock-up of the GUI. Now, I wanna say mock-up here because in the presentation, it was a mock-up or an image, but I've seen it. I actually saw it at Mining Disrupt and it looks exactly like this and it's really badass. It is very much so that it looks like if NiceHash and HiveOS had a baby, they would spit out Flux Core. And that's exactly what this look, what looks like. It's very eye appealing. It's very attractive. It has all the graphs and features that you would want. Uh, and with the full menu bar down the side. Now, Flux Core is pretty much going to be where you mine. You can mine pretty much anything in there. You know, you go in, you set up your GPU rigs in some capacity. You say what cryptocurrency you're mining, what pool you're going to mine to, and you mine. So it's an operating system. But the nice thing is, is that when the day comes when proof of useful work is enabled and available, that you'll just check a box inside of Flux Core, and now your rig will opt into that compute. And let's say you're over here and you're mining uh, something off to the side here like Neoxa, right? And then your rig needs to be used for proof of useful work. If you have that box checked, they discuss that your rig will pivot off of mining Neoxa and over for the compute needed for proof of useful work. And you'll do the job that could take minutes, hours, weeks, or months. And then when that job's done, it's gonna go back to mining Neoxa fully automated and you're paid out strictly in flux for the reward for proof of useful work. All right, so what's the timeline? Did we get anything from this event? Well, let's think about it. The real questions are, when do we get our hands on Flux Core? When can we start benchmarking our rigs to figure out how well we're gonna do? And finally, the biggest question of them all, when will proof of useful work be turned on and enabled for us miners to jump in on. So during the event, I was able to pull Flux's chief proof of useful work architect aside, Alex Perez, and kind of ask some of these questions. So let's go ahead and jump in, but keep in mind, it was really loud and wild there at some times. So I'll go ahead and put some closed captions at the bottom to help out. Where is proof of useful work in the development cycle? I'd say almost pre-alpha because we need okay. to gather a lot of data okay. as well because we want to establish, establish a fair pricing, right? Yeah. Uh, so we have to know what's out there, what's on the market, what, how can one hardware compare to another. I have a, a, couple, a little knowledge about it, but I don't have the answers to it. Okay. How, how am I supposed to give a fair pricing if I don't know what I'm dealing with mm -hmm. in terms of hardware? So the, the pre-alpha is going to be about benchmarking, gathering data, and like basically also for you guys to help situate yourself compared to another type of rig or another setup. When will Flux Core be available to the public and when can we start benchmarking our rigs? I don't really deal with the timelines, but okay. I would love really sure. to have the benchmark going out by the end of this year as okay. it was initially well, basically scheduled. That was your plan is this year? Okay. End of this year, have a 
a few people, whereas maybe, yep. depending on how far we went. Dan will throw it to everybody, let's be honest yeah, here. Probably. <laughs> uh, Is proof of useful work going to be built into Flux Core on day one? Or right away, correct? Only the benchmarking tool, just okay. to like, situate yourself, having the leaderboard, seeing where basically you can improve and like tinker. A little bit with the benchmark as well, like okay. more RAM, less RAM, more... So the benchmark tool will tell you that? Yes. Okay. So will proof of useful work be available in Q1 and Q2 of 2024? So then that puts us into next year in that regard. And, and based off of the timeline there, what is the team aiming for regarding the fact of maybe a quarter or time period on um, you know, proof of useful work being enabled? Because I know for you guys, like I know that you guys are work, you have customers lined up to utilize your platform, or utilize your compute, right? Exactly. So for you guys right now, what are we telling those individuals like mid next year that that's going to be enabled or that it can start to work? I think uh, enabled in a broad way, yeah. which is more of having more feedback on yes. the actual product, but yep. not like enabled where it's a full okay. product, basically. Because we don't want to deliver to these customers. Yep. Because how many times you go back to a restaurant, you didn't like the place? Sure, yeah. well, you want to make sure it's perfect exactly. before it goes out and launches. Well, not perfect, but good enough for good enough. Correct. good delivery, yep. no downtime. Where can we, as GPU miners, go ahead and sign up to get access to Flux Core and proof of useful work? as soon as possible. For now, no sign-ups yet. Okay. Uh, we'll go out and release slowly towards okay. our, our partners and people we work with, okay. mostly, and then we'll spread out a little more and a little more, and then we'll do a sign-up. Maybe, yep. I don't, I actually, I have- You don't know, you're just a technical yeah. side. Just, yeah. <laughs> so let's recap. Flux Core is going to be available to the public before the end of 2023. Awesome. We're gonna be able to start mining in Flux Core, which is gonna be great. Now, on top of that, the benchmarking tool will be available before the end of 2023. So we as GPU miners will know kind of how we stack up against others out there and also determine weak points in our proof of your useful work mining rigs. Now, finally, proof of useful work. When's it gonna be turned on? When's it gonna be enabled? When is this whole thing really gonna kick off? Well, based off the conversations here that we had with Alex, we're looking at Q1, Q2 time period of 2024. So guys, before I go ahead and get out of here, I'm going to give you one teaser. One thing that I found out about while at the event, and I chatted with a few individuals that you won't see on any document, that you won't see on any presentation, that you probably won't see in any other video out there. What is it? Well, proof of useful work at some point, not saying now, not saying early next year, but at some point, there are already discussions that there will be some type of toggle feature within Hive OS for us GPU miners to opt in to proof of useful work for our mining rigs. So we won't have to be running Flux Core to go ahead and participate in proof of useful work, but you didn't hear it here. No, but in all reality though, this is not something that's going to be day one, day two, day 60, day 90, who knows when it's going to be, but there are conversations being had with the Hive team to get this built in to Hive OS, which is going to be off and awesome for us GPU miners. Well, guys, that's going to wrap things up for today. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to be notified when I drop my next video, Go ahead and click that bell and I'll see you guys next time. Hey everyone, it's Son of Attack and I have just released my crypto mining e-course at sonofattack.com. It includes nine high level steps that I utilize to capitalize on the Bitcoin halving cycle and generate a revenue that was twice the amount of my current day job and helped me create a career within cryptocurrency mining as well as of course the cryptocurrency YouTube space specifically as it pertains to mining. I also include in there additional materials surrounding the Bitcoin halving and how you can time that as well. I want to thank Hobbyist Miner for sharing this with you guys, and I hope you'll check it out once again at sonofattack.com.